AMRC's campaign against explicit lyrics in music had its victories and its limits. One of the results of this national discussion was the creation of explicit lyrics warnings record labels could put on albums. Artists expressed concern about warning labels hurting record sales because of retailers that refused to stock explicit albums. But instead of hindering sales of these so-called immoral and objectionable albums, it only boosted their sales. This was the Streisand effect at work. Enter Body Count from Los Angeles, California, with their self-titled record in 1992. Body Count was a thrash metal album with songs about voodoo and sexual escapades, as well as racial tensions and police brutality of the time. That last part got them in trouble. Cop Killer was the final song on the album. It's an up-tempo, bouncy revenge fantasy where a character fed up with police brutality puts on a ski mask and gets his adrenaline pumping to dust off some cops. I got my black shirt on. This shit has been too long. I got my 12 gauge shot off. I got my headlights turned off. I'm not to bust some shots off. I'm not to dust some cops off. Just a year prior was the Rodney King police beating. 1992 was also an election year for the United States, so the album reflected the climate. Frontman Ice T considered the album to be a protest record, with Cop Killer being aimed at crooked cops as opposed to the entire police force. The song was written before the L.A. riots. Ice-T says it was a warning to abusive police officers of simmering tension in the black community. The song came to fruition when Ice-T walked into rehearsal one day singing Psycho Killer by the Talking Heads. Drummer Beatmaster V overheard it and said, We need a cop killer. Ice-T then came up with a character that went over the edge based on police brutality. It was a character used to make a contemporary social statement, not to incite real-life murder. He later compared this to David Bowie singing Space Oddity, saying if you believe that I'm a cop killer, you believe David Bowie is an astronaut. The time was ripe for the album release because the Rodney King riots would happen over a month after it hit the shelves. For those angered by police brutality, Cop Killer became their rallying cry, especially since King was name-checked in the song. But it also made the band, Sire Records, and parent label Warner Brothers, who was part of the Time Warner conglomerate, the targets of censors. Political figures were bothered by it, including the United States President George H.W. Bush and his Vice President Dan Quayle. It is wrong for a powerful, influential corporation like Time Warner to make money off a record that says it's okay to kill cops. The PMRC, of course, lost their minds over it. Law enforcement groups and unions feared that the song would inspire real-life violence against police. Many of these police groups called for boycotting products by Time Warner as a protest to Cop Killer. The album by rap artist Ice-T includes a song called Cop Killer, which law enforcement officers say is an invitation to violence. At Time Warner shareholder meetings, actor Charlton Heston recited the lyrics for Cop Killer and KKK Bitch in an attempt to embarrass Warner Brothers into dropping the album. I f the police. I know your family's grieving. F them. Even the police commissioner of New Zealand tried to have the song banned. Warner Brothers received hate mail, nasty phone calls, and at least one package that required examining by a bomb squad. Stockholders also threatened to pull out of the company. Despite everything, Warner Brothers supported body count and their right to freedom of speech. Quote, we absolutely deplore all the violence, particularly violence against law enforcement officials. Nevertheless, it is vital that we stand by our commitment to the free expression of ideas for all our authors, journalists, recording artists, screenwriters, actors, and directors. Time Warner co-CEO Gerald Levin encouraged critics to heed the message in the song instead of trying to silence the messenger. There were people who defended the band based on their right to freedom of speech. If anyone didn't want to listen to the song, they didn't have to buy the album. Besides the freedom of speech argument, defenders also reminded people of Bob Marley's I Shot the Sheriff and Eric Clapton's cover of it. Anti-police sentiment and punk music was also mentioned. Ice-T also felt there was a double standard with the backlash. Critics of his song misidentify it as rap, not hard rock. That's typical of opportunistic politicians. Yeah, they got mad because it crossed over to the white kids, but when they publicized against it, they called it a rap record. In other words, when you say rap, that means black, and you'll get more people behind it. Whereas if you say rock, some of the parents out there would be like, wait a minute, I like rock. So it was kind of a racist way of attacking it as a rap record. Cop Killer is not a rap record. People pointed out that Ice-T himself played a police officer in the 1991 movie, New Jack City. 
he would later play a police officer in the TV show Law & Order, Special Victims Unit. Protesters have said, body count may have freedom of speech, but the record label has a social responsibility. It has nothing to do with freedom of expression. It has everything to do with incredible corporate greed, with incredible social irresponsibility. Some even said that while Body Count had the right to say what they wanted, that didn't mean the record company was relieved of responsibility from the backlash or that any company had to provide an outlet for them. Even artists like James Brown opposed the song, saying, I'm sick of this cop killing anti-hope music. Stores pulled the album off of shelves as the controversy grew. Meanwhile, the album climbed higher on the Billboard charts. So far, it does not look like the calls for an Ice-T boycott are working. Even though some stores have taken Ice-T's album off the shelves, it's still selling well. In fact, faster than when the protest began. The album is now number 62 on the pop charts, up from 66 last week. Police sometimes threatened to arrest the band for singing the song live, or they would refuse to do security at their shows. The Greensboro, North Carolina Police Department told one store not to sell the album, or they wouldn't respond to emergency calls. Not among police groups wanting the song banned was the National Black Police Association. They said that police brutality was the cause of anti-police sentiment, inspiring songs like Cop Killer to exist. After all the trouble, Ice-T told Warner Brothers to take Cop Killer off the album. The backlash against the song became too much, and Ice-T felt it overshadowed the rest of the album. Body Count left Warner Brothers and in return were given the album's masters. So all I'm saying to the police organizations is that, come get me. Leave Warner alone, it ain't Warner, it's me. Cop Killer was replaced on the album with a metal version of Ice-T's song, Freedom of Speech. Freedom of Speech, yeah, boy, but just watch what you say. Freedom of Speech, yeah. Meanwhile, one branch of a major music retailer reported selling more than 40 copies of Body Count in a single day. Since everyone found out, everyone's been coming in, buying it. Some people criticized Ice-T for caving into the pressure. One senior record industry executive told the Associated Press that Ice-T's decision sets a dangerous precedent which will encourage future protests to limit free speech. But he said he didn't want the song to be the only reason the album sold. There's going to be a lot of groups who are, are uh, very active in, in censoring or attempting to censor artists' works. They're going to look at this and, and consider this a victory. Ice-T would pose on the cover of Rolling Stone dressed as a cop enraging police departments across the United States. Of course it offends me, number one, he just, uh, he didn't earn to wear that, that uniform or the badge. Virgin Records ended up releasing the second album, Born Dead. Body Count continued on and off, but none of their albums had the same kind of impact as the self-titled. The controversy followed them throughout their career, and they still played Cop Killer Live. Later in life, Ice-T said he felt the record needed to be made at the time. At the end of the day, Cop Killer was basically authority killer. People don't like authority. That's really what it is. And that's the core of rock and roll. But cops are human beings and they're capable of everything we are. I'm definitely not anti-cop. I play a cop on TV. But I hate bullies and racists and people who take advantage of their position. Whether that's a cop or your boss at work or the guy on the block. Whether they've got a badge on or not. Body Count's anthem called for conversations about the limits of freedom of speech. These conversations often debated how free expression conflicts with corporate interests. Rodney King's police brutality story wasn't the last to get nationwide attention. Police protest songs became more common, and Body Count would do more police protest songs like Black Hoodie later in their career. But Cop Killer was caught in a perfect storm of media frenzy that left a lasting impact. But tonight we get even.